Hey everybody, I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside and welcome to As Above, So Below, a rune and tarot divination for Monday, the 29th day of July, 2024. Couple things happening this week. My my uh, oldest grandson turns five on Wednesday, so happy birthday. Um, we'll be calling him and, and uh, doing a video call with him on, on Wednesday for that. We've already sent presents and, you know, we're not going to be able to go, though. We uh, can't really leave here right now <laughs> with the gardens and everything growing. We have to be here to water and stuff, so we can't uh, go down during the middle of the week. That's when our irrigation time is, and that wouldn't be good. <laughs> Watch everything sort of burn up while we're gone. <laughs> so so we'll just be giving a, doing a video call with him on Wednesday. And on Thursday, technically, well, it's not technically uh, Lamas or Lanasa, uh, that's actually when the sun reaches uh, 15 degrees Leo, which is roughly sometime, I think, between 5 and 5.15 p.m. on August 6th. Uh, but the celebration, we, the celebrating of it is on the 1st of August, and uh, it's the first of uh, three harvest festivals, if you will. Uh, usually there's one at Maybon, and also uh, that's at the equinox, the autumn equinox, fall equinox uh, in September. Uh, and then, uh, uh, let's see, and then also uh, uh, Samhain or Halloween, that's the third. Um, and right now, it's, I like to make a harvest soup. I don't know if I'm going to have enough to do that with from the garden, but uh, we'll see. I, I kind of don't think I do, but I, I did freeze some uh, some uh, broccoli. So maybe I'll still have some broccoli. I, we can put some broccoli in it and some some. Uh, uh, zucchini and uh, if there's some new potatoes i might put some of that in there i know the carrots are are uh, are, are coming due here my husband brought one in and it, it looked pretty good so i think we'll probably be starting to do that here as well we can at least pull a couple and stick into a soup and uh, uh i i just like to do on during the harvest times i like to i like to do soups i don't know that's just what i do um but anyway that's this week um and unless you want to be real hardcore about it and celebrate it on the 6th, you, you, I mean, you can do it at any time. The energy is right for it. So whichever day works for you. Wait for the weekend. You're getting closer to the 6th there. So, uh, But anyway, uh, if, you, if you're real hardcore about it, then it's 15 degrees Leo. So, <laughs> But you don't have to do that. Uh, anyhow, um, I've already gone ahead and pulled the cards and the, and the runes. I started this once and then, I don't know, things got a little weird with the video, so I stopped. Um, but I like it, so I'm going to keep going with it and because uh, it's already in my head. Uh, and it's also just a really um, nice manifestation type of a, of a, a reading here. Um, we have the 29th day of July, and so 2 and 9 is 11. That's the master number for awakening and illumination and enlightenment. So we're awakening to, I think, the reality that people are tired of all of the hate and all of the anger. Uh, it just seems like there's two paths. We've talked about this before in the readings where it just seems like there's two paths that have formed. One that's wanting to have harmony and unity and L and uplift society and and preserve the rights that we have and expand on things that that protect the country against against bad actors that want to both within and without of and without uh, of the country essentially that want to take us backwards uh, into a place of of no rights and. Uh, uh, a, a very small group of people wanting to force their opinions and, and how they see everything, uh, uh, both from a corporate standpoint, because I guarantee you that's part of it, uh, and also a religious standpoint. Uh, where a very small group of people want to control everybody's lifestyle and everybody's belief system. And that's kind of not how things are <laughs> with humanity and nor should it be in my opinion you know we're here to to learn and to love and to to to, to deal with things and and uh, uh, express ourselves as souls having this experience because that's what we are but all too often the ego gets away from things from, from all of that and starts controlling everything and people want power who who really should not have any power at all, really, because they want to do things that are harmful to other people, um, treat people as if they're less than, 
uh, somebody else. You know, if you don't have a certain color of skin, then, you know, you're not worthy somehow of any kind of protection, of any kind of success in life. You're, you're the other instead of understanding that everyone around us is the other side of self. And uh, we all have worth, we all have value, we, we all matter, and, and uh, uh, we all have a right to, to live in, in peace and harmony and, and uh, unity with one another and to uh, come together in a way that elevates things spiritually uh, instead of trying to have people put their thumb on everybody and decide for everybody else, no, you can't have any of that. You can't. You know, you can't have, it's like, oh, we don't want, we, we don't want that. We don't want education except unless it's education of what we believe. So let's not talk about slavery. Let's take those out of the history books because we don't like the idea of how that makes, you know, white people look. Well, that's ridiculous. It's, it's that kind of weird thinking. I mean, it's just strange, you know, that we could come as far as we have. And now we're dealing with this in this intense way right now makes no sense to me but maybe it's just the last vestiges of patriarchy trying to control the populace maybe i don't know uh, but it's it's not going to work uh, clearly we're seeing that whole energy building and building and building uh, and what i drew this morning here for the above side of things from the elder futhark bag was urus urus is the second rune of the elder futhark and it basically talks about manifestation energy shaping matter how do you shape your reality is it being shaped from higher perspective from higher awareness from the soul's perspective or are you allow are you allowing your ego to try to shape everything in a way that maybe suits you but isn't going to be good for anyone else you see it's that type of an experience here that you have with urus how are you going to shape your reality today uh it's it's considered uh it's about health and healing and endurance and strength uh it, it means the orox which was a very large i think bison looking creature uh in the past it's since gone extinct, apparently, but all but someone's got DNA, I guess, and they're they're thinking about reformulating and doing its own little Jurassic Park thing with it, <clears throat> and so we can see what it looked like, you know, because I guess they were really big, and uh, uh, and it kind of looks like that. Kind of looks like a, the shape of a bison, you know, its back right here, kind of angling a little bit, and you know, but the but the horns that point point downward, that's manifesting. That's manifesting into physical reality from spirit, essentially. The primal forming essence is not the ego, it's spirit, it's the soul. And having the soul govern that whole experience here. Uh, and again, with the 11 numerology for the day, you're looking at awakening and enlightenment to higher truth and rejecting hate, rejecting the type of control that one side of things seems to want to force on everyone else. Uh, that's not that's not where we're going. It's not where humanity's going, not spiritually, not, not environmentally, not politically, not whatever it is, right? That's not where the life is going on this planet. It's raising its vibration. We all need to raise with it. And it doesn't happen if we stay down in the muck of the ego, you know, where you've got this faction controlling and this faction wanting control. And it, it doesn't work that way. It's coming together in common purpose to manifest something from a higher perspective and to come together here with conjunctio, with the lower side of things, uh, uh, in unity and in joining together uh, in, in a way that manifests from a higher perspective or from a soul perspective. Um, so from there, I drew three cards. Two are from the Major Arcana. I'm going to leave them in the order that they're in. Um, a lot of the times I like to take them, the major arcana cards and put them a little bit higher above, you know, to their, to where it would be maybe like this, because they have a higher, higher type of, 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 of energy than, than, than this card does, but that isn't the way I drew them. And I, and I, and I can do it that way, but I, I'm just going to leave them the way I drew them. Um, because I think it's important that we begin with the two of cups. Now, cups is the water element. It's our emotions. It's compassion. It's unity. It's healing. It's it's peace. It's love. And here we see two individuals, a man and a woman. The man is taking the is essentially initiating 
the the healing between the couple uh, their home is likely this on the hill over here that's probably their home you see this dual line here you see this in some of the tarot cards not all of them most of them you don't um, but to me it, it means two two kinds of experiences like perhaps something happened here at home to cause a problem between the two two people so they're stepping out away from all of that get away from that influence get away from the energy of of maybe the fighting or the arguing or whatever it might have been um, but here there's the man is stepping toward the woman reaching his hand out as well toward her both are holding chalices the two can be again about uh, balance healing love peace uh, unity but it can also be decisions and so they're making the decision to heal the problem between them to return to love to return to balance to return to harmony and uh, and again, you see the man uh, reaching out to the woman to do that, taking that first step. Um, it doesn't mean that he is necessarily at fault. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't really address the idea of fault. Just that a situation was happening and you don't want it to, to continue. And so now it's time to just stop to move away from it, drop resistance and and take that step toward one another and and find common ground again. Um, so that there's peace and harmony and love happening instead of whatever, you know, uh, negativity or fighting or arguing or disagreeing or whatever it was that was happening that was causing a rift between the two. This can play out in pretty much any situation uh, that you might be experiencing, whether it's with a partner or a child or 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 a sibling or a co-worker or a neighbor or a friend or or whatever it is. It could happen. Any circumstance could apply here that you could be dealing with here today. Making that choice to come back together in unity uh, and love and, and forgiveness and, and uh, uh, doing that with from a higher purpose. Um, not because you want anything necessarily from the other person other than to just be together with them again. Um, there's been a lot of, of uh, issues over the last, you know, eight years or so where, where we've had uh, one administration that was very, um, well, it was just off the wall. It was strange. It was weird. It was, it was like, okay, what are you guys really doing? You know, and I think over time we began to understand what that was. And, uh, and then of course that didn't continue on into the, to the current administration. Here we have a very different vibe, a very different feeling, uh, elevating society, bringing people together, uh, working in common purpose, um, trying to heal the problems that are happening in the country with, with that, that people are being affected by being impacted by, uh, and, uh, uh, whereas the other side doesn't really seem to care about that. Um, so again, we've talked about this before, two paths forming. Well, they're here, they've formed. And the one that seems to be on a more positive, uh, uplifting society kind of thing, awakening to higher truth, uh, seems to be becoming more and more energized by the minute. And the fact that that's happening over a very short period of time and the intensity is growing and growing and growing and people are joining it that maybe in the past were maybe on the other side, they're switching sides now and they're coming for this, this moment in history where we can really achieve something positive for everyone concerned uh, versus just the small power oriented people that want to control this other way of thinking. Uh, and I think that 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 type of energy is there and present. When you go to the the next two cards of the major arcana, we start with temperance. Uh, this is the 14th card of the major arcana with a five numerology. That's about change. It's also about protection, variety, innovation, freedom versus restriction. Here you see the angel with one foot on the land and one foot in the water. Uh, holding two chalice, chalices, pouring water from one to the other. Uh, you see the soul, uh, the, the, the creator energy emanating from, from the angel's head. You see the sun disc here. Uh, you see the sun rising between two peaks, again talking about balance. Temperance is about moderation and adaptation. It's about balance. It's about 
grounding yourself when you see the glyph for fire here on the gown it's embedded in a cube which is the the glyph for for earth and so fire needs to be grounded by emotion you cannot allow passion and control and 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 all of that the negative side of fire to try to uh overtake and 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 at that point then see it's the ego taking over and trying to control everything a lack of impulse control getting out of control and so you want to ground that fire uh with with uh essentially using water to quench some of that fire essentially um it's not enough to put it out you still want to have the type of of fire energy within the type of invocation of will where you're you're you know uh, achieving your your uh, uh finding new opportunities or making your opportunities initiating it's motivating for you to succeed uh creativity all that's fire element but at the same time you can't let it get so far out of control that you um forget to be compassionate to other people and to look at other people as part of the process instead of somebody that you stick your thumb on and try to control them um, so balancing that with temperance the the higher higher vibrational side of temperance essentially given that uh, uh, the major arcana is considered soul archetype cards you're looking at the soul taking over the process and saying no we're going to do this in a little more of a balance here uh, so that compassion and love and, and empathy and assistance is available uh, within your heart to offer to other people instead of, you know, defining how everyone else is supposed to live. It, it's not about that. It's, it's coming together in unity, healing the issues between one another, uh, manifesting in a way that is, that is unified and, and uh, 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 collaborative. And from there, then you take the leap into form the leap into the undeveloped potential expressed by the fool to then embark on a new journey together uh, one that is elevated one that's from a higher perspective instead of letting the ego control and which always ends up being it's not like this one massive ego it's it's a, a couple people that are controlling all of the rest of it right and that this only for their own material benefit you know whether it's money or power or both typically it's both um, and, and I think that instead of, I think what the reading is suggesting here today is instead of manifesting from that, from the ego's perspective, we need to manifest from a higher perspective and understand that we are all one family. We are all one in spirit. We're all one in the creator. Uh, the souls comprise the collective consciousness of the creator. And so that's what we're here to be and to manifest that the whole idea of heaven on earth we're manifest manifesting that truth that fundamental truth of who we are into our experiences in tangible reality in physical reality in form in the incarnation that we choose to have all right not a let not in other words not forgetting that's what we are and then coming here and it being a free-for-all right that's not what that's about not when you're talking about manifesting heaven on earth it means you're manifesting that collective conscious truth of who we are fundamentally together as one piece of the uh, one source essentially here on this planet and making that a better place for everybody concerned we can still have the experiences we need to have. We can still learn from everything that we need to learn. But it's time at this point now to move forward together in a type of unity that we're manifesting from higher awareness, not the ego. It can't be this constant struggle that we're always seeming to be in, you know, between light and dark. And that, but yet that's what's going on. It's just, I think at this point, light is winning essentially light the light is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger the more we come together and manifest that soul reality into physical reality and realize that this is a unified experience we're just all little pieces of that we're all playing our part in that greater consciousness that greater reality that manifests from higher awareness from the collective consciousness from the soul level of things so, you know, big reading for a Monday, but I think that we're embarking upon this journey where this is going to get defined for us. Are we going to live under an oppressive rule? 
because if things change here in our election in November, that's what's going to happen. But if we continue this progress we're making toward understanding that we're all part of this shared common purpose to elevate everyone, to make things better for people, uh, to respect the individual differences that we all have that create this beautiful garden in which we live, you know. I think that's what's at stake. People want to bring it down to simply politics, but I don't think that's simply what it is. I think that this is really about understanding who we really are. And finally, manifesting all of that, this life we live together, manifesting it together from that higher perspective, that common purpose, that, com that, that, that essentially collective consciousness that we all are a part of, uh, instead of allowing you know, the handful of uh, egos deciding, oh, no, no, we're going to control you. We're going to we're going to take everything backwards to where we're comfortable, where we're in control. It's the paid. It's it's like it's the last vestiges of the patriarchy rearing its ugly hat head. And, and the rest of us are going, no, no, no more. Enough. Enough of that nonsense. We're not doing that anymore. We're firmly on this path towards something better. And that, to me, is the energy of the moment. And you have to make your decision as to where you stand on that, you know, which side of the coin you wish to be on, um, the positive side or the negative side. And uh, I think that what you're seeing is this, this massive movement toward the, po the, the positive side of things, um, something that reflects higher awareness and the soul instead of whatever this other stuff is that, that is just... I mean, you can't even look at it. I mean, I just, it just, it's icky, you know? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's just icky and strange and odd. And I guess the new word is weird. And it is. It is. It's like, why would anyone live that way? Why does anyone have to live in fear? Why do you, why do you have to live in, in worry? Why should you have to do that? You shouldn't. Uh, and if we could all get on the same page about that, then the life would be a whole lot better around the world, you know? Because it's not just here. It's everywhere. You're seeing this, this movement toward the people saying, no more. We're not going to live in fear. We're not going to go down that road with you. That's not the road we want to be on. And so you're seeing this energy of, 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 of enlightenment and awakening taking hold here around the whole planet. And it's exciting to see. But it begins with each one of us and the decision that we make of which path we wish to be on. And this one is suggesting to manifest peace and harmony and love and awakening so besides it's nice it's fun <laughs> i don't know anyhow that's an interesting reading though for a monday to get us started here as we are coming to the end of one month and a beginning of another uh and on on uh lamas or lunasad whatever you wish to call it on uh, the first you know what what are you going to harvest you know, you're going to harvest some love and be able to manifest that to everyone around you. Um, or is it, are you just trying to control everybody to think the way you do and uh, in a way that's narrow and, and harmful and hurtful? So anyhow, I don't know. It's like good versus evil. I don't know. It's, it's a it's a it's an odd time we find ourselves in one would have thought humanity would have figured this out by now but maybe this is the time maybe this is the time we were always supposed to figure it out but it just feels to me like that's what's happening and so I guess we'll figure out who's who's going to win this and I just think that that the light's going to win I don't think darkness is going to overshadow us much longer and uh, there may be pockets of resistance in places but but love is going to win Love will win out over, over all of the darkness. And so, and I think that's what this reading is telling us. We have a choice. We can choose to heal. We can choose to love. Uh, or we can choose something else. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather choose to heal and choose to love. So, anyhow, thanks for watching. Uh, check out the blog over at Stepping Aside. The web address there is imsteppingaside.com. Everything went out in the midnight hour in the morning, midnight <laughs> on uh, uh, Sunday morning. 
the uh, uh, last of the Exploring Tarot series uh, was done. Uh, this next time, uh, I think I'm going to start talking about different herbs used in magic. And uh, and I'm going to start with agrimony. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but that's when all that stuff comes out. I, it also posts in the 3 a.m. hour on Substack, Medium, and, and Patreon. Most of the stuff I write goes over there, too. So if you like reading those platforms, that's cool, too. I, I'd love you to read my stuff over there. Otherwise, um, check out the blog. Um, I've had it since uh, 2012, and I, I like it. it. I like doing it. I enjoy writing and, and the stuff I write about. And, and uh, uh, you know, we'll... Uh, get together again on Thursday for another edition of As Above, So Below. I hope you'll click subscribe and, uh, and again, come back on Thursday for another edition of As Above, So Below. I'm repeating myself here. <laughs> but be good to yourself, be good to one another, and blessed be.